Good morning, church family. Welcome to the First 15. I'm so excited that you have joined me today to start off our day right, engaging God in prayer. As we seek to jump into prayer today, we're going to use Psalm 107 to help lead the way. And in Psalm 107, we find this great expression of gratitude towards God. And in the second through the ninth verse, we find an account of, of God's goodness. And we're going to find some attributes of God uh, to praise Him for, to spend some time reflecting on and thanksgiving, asking God for some things, and, and really confessing our need for God and leaning on Him uh, today for help. So let's jump in and let's take a look at verse 1 of Psalm 107. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God is good. It's, it's who he is. He is the definition of what good is. And how incredible is it that that is who our God is? Can you imagine if God wasn't good? So let's just take a moment together and let's praise God this morning that he is good. Would you join me in this prayer, church? God, we praise you that you are good. We are so blessed because you are. The psalm continues and it says this, For his steadfast love endures forever. And what that means is that God's love never quits. It never runs out. It never runs thin. It never evaporates. God's love remains forever, we're told. How incredible is that? So let's praise God for his love this morning. Would you join me? God, we praise you that your love is steadfast. Thank you for loving me even when I don't deserve to be loved. Now, would you tell God what it means to you that he loves you. If you need a little more time, go ahead and hit pause. In the second verse, it reads this way. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble. God is a redeemer. And in this sense here, in this verse, the idea of redemption is being pulled out of trouble, being delivered from something. And then I love what he says. He says, if you've been delivered from trouble by God, then say so. Let the word out. We need to let the world know, the people around us, that God has drawn us out of difficult times, that God has drawn us out of hardship, to think of where we would be without God's help in our lives and let people know. So would you join me in this prayer that, that we would ask God to let our lives point to him and what he does in our lives to deliver us from the times of trouble. Would you join me in this prayer? God, we have been rescued from so much in our lives. So much trouble has come our way, and we are here to tell about it. You have redeemed us from trouble. We want to be people that share how good you have been in our lives with the people we are around today. We ask that you give us opportunities to tell others what you have done for us us. Give us words to speak that would help others to be encouraged by our testimonies. Use our lives to point others to you today. Amen. In verse 3, the psalm continues and it reads this way, and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. God is a gatherer. He brings together people that were dispersed. And that's what he's doing in this psalm here. It's a, an account of God bringing together those who were dispersed. And you know, that's exactly what God continues to do. It's exactly what the gospel is all about. That, that God is gathering to himself 
people that have been separated from him by their sin. That through Christ and his death and his resurrection, he is gathering people that put their trust in Christ to be their savior to himself. What an incredible God that would do that, that would gather us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Would you just join me as we ask today that God would continue that work of gathering people to himself, especially those that we know personally that are far from him and that desperately need to be saved. So would you join me in this prayer? God, there are people that you love, that Jesus died for, that need to repent and believe in Jesus. And would you ask God right now to bring to mind someone that you know that doesn't have salvation through Jesus yet? So you're bringing someone to mind? Would you ask God right now to gather that person to himself, to bring that person to salvation in Jesus Christ? Would you ask him to do that right now? In verse 4, this psalm continues. And it reads this way. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. The word deliver here tells us that God is a deliverer, and it means that he snatches or plucks people out of the situation they're in, that they need to be rescued from. He, he reaches in and he pulls them out. That's what our God does. And I love how it states that they cried out and then God did this. God responds to the cries of his people. We see it all throughout scripture. And so let me ask you, do you know someone that's in a tough spot, someone that's in distress today, and they need God to reach in and snatch them out of that place? Can you think of who that might be today? Well, as God brings that person or persons to mind, we want to lift them to our God. So would you join me? Let's pray. Who do you know that is struggling? It may be physically, financially, emotionally, or even relationally. Whoever that is that God has brought to mind right now, would you just ask for God to pull them out of that distress? Would you cry out to God on their behalf right now? If you need a little more time, go ahead and hit pause. The psalm continues in verse 7. It says this, He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. He led them. God leads, and God always leads and always directs in the best direction. God never leads us to anything less than the best. Our God is a great leader. And he, he beckons us to follow his lead for our own good and for his glory. So let's thank him this morning for his leadership in our lives. Would you thank him for leading you, first and foremost, if you know Jesus as your Savior, for leading you to Christ? Would you just thank him right now for leading you to salvation in Jesus? And would you thank him for leading you to what is best? And 
And what is one thing this morning that you can think of that he has led you to that you can thank him for right now? God, thank you so much for being such an incredible leader in our lives. Well, we continue our look at this psalm in verse 8, and it says, Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. God works wonders. God does things beyond our capability, beyond our imagination. What wondrous works has God done in your life? As you think about it this morning, where would you be if God hadn't done the big things that he has done in your life? Think about just how wondrous his works have been for you. Let's tell him thank you for those wondrous works. Would you join me? God, we just want to say thank you for the way that you have worked in our lives. What wondrous work do you need to say thank you to God for this morning? Go ahead and do that right now. If you need a little more time, go ahead and hit pause. Well, the final verse that we're going to look at together in Psalm 107 is verse 9. And it says, For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. God satisfies. That's our God. We're made by him and for him. And our souls will never be satisfied until they find their satisfaction in him. How good is it that God made us and loves us and satisfies our souls? But here's the issue. This convicts me because I don't always look to him to be the satisfaction for my soul. I find myself looking to things to satisfy my soul, for experiences to satisfy my soul, maybe even a relationship and and trying to, to find a satisfaction in that relationship that only God can truly give. And so if you're in the same boat as me, let's let's take a moment, let's just confess that sometimes we look for satisfaction in the wrong place and ask God to help us to find the satisfaction that can only be found in him, today in him. So would you join me in this prayer? Let's pray. God, forgive us for thinking that other things can fill and satisfy our souls. We want to look to you first and often today. We admit we need your help. Thank you that you are what we need most. Thank you that we can find our greatest satisfaction in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning for the first 15 My hope is that you will continue to engage with God throughout the day today, enjoying him as he enjoys you. Have an incredible day. God bless.